Okay, let's clean up this eye and then start getting the mouth put in place here. So um, I have this model a little different than the last time you've seen it for the texture. Um, one of the things that I've changed is the rotation of it. I've also uh, renamed a couple things here. So instead of the puncta, which is the little uh, valves of the eye that shoot out tears, things like that, uh, those I've just changed to um, the pink of the eye or pink eye. Um, although it's, it's not what you're thinking, it's just the pink of the eye around the edges here. Um, I've also uh, changed, I think I just had this named as eye or something like that. These are iris. And the reason why I changed that is you'll notice when I look at this model here, um, I want that to be a little bit more centered. The highlight is kind of coming around this way. I want this to be top down. So all I'm going to do with this selected is just rotate it. And now this should help with this. I'm going to hit Control S and see what I got there. Okay, that's looking a lot better already. Um, now that I have that, again, I'm going to continue painting out some of these spots. Um, you're going to notice some uh, worry lines or something like that because when I was blocking this in, it is, um, you know, it's... Uh, quick and dirty and I need to get this a little bit more cleaned up so you can see I've got this right here that makes uh, her age quite uh, a bit so I'm going to change that out and I'm also going to get that frown to go away because that is a really really creepy looking uh, mouth so she looks like she's scowling uh, so we want to make her a little bit less um, angry and more approachable and that's all going to be about the expression that we're trying to play into here so first thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit more shadow and um, some highlights to this model here. And so I'm going to do that by continuing to paint in my pink part of the eye. And usually there's a little bit more here. Now you're noticing I'm getting this really bad artifact that is occurring when I paint. And that is going to happen um, to anyone at some point. Um, your video card is gonna have a bit of a glitch. And I'm gonna move this out of this layer. You'll notice that goes away. That is, I'm not sure, I think Photoshop just has an issue with me painting this layer as an overlay with the opacity and all these other effects going on in there. So to be able to amend that, or at least fix that for now, uh, I'm gonna paint this uh, outside of that layer. And so just again, making sure I don't have anything selected good. I'm painting these things um, and turning that on and off. I'm seeing how that's impacting this final piece. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to increase the opacity even more. There we go. And I'm going to also erase some of that around that edge. A little too much there. So control, oh, let me just erase here too. Control S and you'll see that update right here. So what we're doing right now is bringing about the three dimensionality of our, um, I, right? We, we painted the base colors on there and now we're trying to make this feel um, like it's a real eyeball. And that is by slowly building up and bringing in more and more color into our piece. So um, again, this takes time. It takes practice. I'm gonna hit S to save and bring that in. Okay, so that's starting to look a lot better. Um, and if it goes too far, remember, we can easily just knock that back by dropping our opacity for this. So um, a little bit goes a long way for these, and it is a constant evaluation of it in 3D. So now that I have something like this, um, I need to kind of push some shadows a little bit more. And I also need to clean up the, um, the eyelashes and kind of define where that edge is. So to do that, very easy thing to do. Um, with my lashes layer, I noticed that lashes layer is where I, I for whatever reason, made that um, that worry line or that lower eye or eyelid. I'm going to delete that, and you'll right away notice she looks a lot younger. So that's a very quick way to fix that. Um, with these lashes, I'm going to continue by cleaning the um, shape of this up. I'm going to make sure that my brush is a hard round. And those should be like default general brushes, hard round. And now when I erase that, I can easily clean this thing up. Again, I'm getting that really weird 
uh, video card error. I'm going to drag that above. And now I shouldn't see that while I'm painting. I have a um, GeForce 1080. I'd love to be able to get an RTX at some point. Um, but this is uh, definitely um, something that should be doable for this. This is actually um, still a pretty good graphics card that's on here. So um, don't feel because you're using a, a laptop or something like that, it's not going to work for you. Um, I started with, with much worse hardware than what we're using in here. And due to the fact that we're all working from home, uh, I am taking into account all that for when we're um, working. So that way we're, we're able to use technologies that should um, go and be uh, usable to multiple um, different workstations and things of that nature. So um, very much aware of, of our issues that we're all facing right now. So um, I'm going to just keep defining my line. If I get too fast, reduce the flow. I don't want that to just come out super fast. And again, I can knock that back with the eraser tool if I go too far. So slow and steady. Control S. Okay. So now that I see this, I am starting to realize um, that pink needs to tone down because she looks like uh, she got some conjunctivitis, something that we don't want our model to have. So we're going to clean that up by reducing how much that pink eye uh, layer is. So right now the opacity is 48. I'm going to drop that down to maybe a 24. Control S. And now it's a it's a lot less there so I think that's that's probably better now with these layers I'm gonna make one more we're just gonna call that shadow and I guess we can call that eye shadow so with eye shadow I'm not even using that idea of um, the makeup I'm just trying to um, put shadows within the eye layer and my opacity I'm gonna drop that down and just do a quick stroke across the face of this and my flow is low so I'm gonna increase that a little bit let's go 100% on that where is that is that huh. oh it was an eraser tool that's why helps if you're uh, using the right Thing. So I'm going to bracket key close to make that larger and there we go. It's working. All right. So let me drop my flow and my opacity again. Actually, let's use the opacity on this. We're going to drop it on the brush, not the layer first. All right. So I can see I made a little glitch there. There's that. So what we're doing is we're um, simulating the shadow that occurs from Yep, that person, I just heard him say that. Yep, the, the upper lid. Yep. So yes, that's what we're doing. Um, it's not live. My wife just thought I was doing this live. I just like to talk to myself when I do this because it's um, more fun and uh, less, less lonely. Um, so she apologizes. Uh, she apologizes to all of you. Oh. <laughs> She apologizes to you because of me because um, she says I'm a nerd. All right, so I'm going to keep going on this, erase some of that, uh, control S. Look at that shadow. It's not great, but it's getting there. So we need to keep on bringing in some depth on this. And we also need to think about how we need to add some highlight to the above part of our eyeball as well. So. I'm going to um, add a little bit of brush right here. And I know we had one underneath right there. And that one wasn't looking so great. And that was because it was in a position that, that made it more like a bag on the eye or under the eyes. We, what we're trying to do is really um, 
um, just give a little bit of uh, plumpness to the um, the under eye, just to, to beef that up a little bit. So, um, and you can, as you can see, it as I said, a little bit of this stuff goes a long way. So, Control S, there's that little bit of a shape right there. I'm gonna keep that, but what I'm gonna do now is go into my uh, smudge tool. I'm gonna pull that. And now that I have this, Control S, you'll see there's a little bit of that. Um, I just tried to move around in my uh, video editing screen, which uh, doesn't work that way. Okay, so that's, that's starting to get there. You don't wanna build up too fast, too quickly. Okay, so if I have that going on, let's let's start to address some of the um, areas where we need some highlights. So all this stuff now needs to go into the eyes. I'm gonna drag all of this and drag that into the layer underneath. And now I have all my eyes stuff in here. Um, and I'm gonna now make another layer that we'll, we'll call these highlights. And this will be highlights that I'll be using um, for the entire uh, model. So we were already doing like planes and shadows on that, and now we need to have highlights. So this layer I'm gonna tuck inside of uh, the face. And now we wanna have this set to screen for our blend, and I want that to be like a light uh, color. So let me get uh, like a flesh color here and just test that out. So if I paint across here, and of course, I've got our old pail, the uh, video error showing up again. Let's see. Okay, that's sort of showing up. Let's get more of that. So my opacity, let's go 100% on that and increase my flow a little bit. And let's see what this does. Okay, it's working. I just need to knock that back now. So the flow, I'm going to keep it at around that. Uh, so that's around 19% for right now. My opacity, I'm going to drop down. And now when I do that, you'll see it's starting to give me something like this. And you'll see that that video error goes away again. This is driving me nuts. Okay, so what I need to do is kind of simulate the um, the fatty upper lip of the eyeball. Not eyeball, eyelid. And so we'll make that go on like this. Now that's, that's a lot, and I'm aware of that. So what I'm gonna start to do is blend and by blending down, since this is underneath this other layer of the eye, it will disappear. And if I hit um, Control S when I'm ready, you'll notice that it's starting to simulate an eyelid. Um, now it doesn't really look where I want that to be yet. I need that upper part to be um, represented a little bit better on this. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and add some more. Okay. And let's test that one out now. And that's looking okay. We can keep shaping this out. Um, the good news too is that I do have my eyes layer that had shadow in it and I also have shadow um, here and planes. I'm going to go into the planes. Now that these can be merged down but I'm going to keep those alone. Um, Alright, now I'm going to just add a little bit of shadow above that just to knock that back a little bit. So. Let's see, I'm on here, brush across, and okay, that's that's going. And now again, use our buddy, the smudge tool to work that around. And that is, that is glitching super crazy so um, apparently in multiple layers this doesn't like to um, 
have too much work done on it. So I'm going to back that up and actually just do that a little bit better. So my smudge tool doesn't need to be used as much. So hit the B key and I'm going to increase the size on that and go across real quick across that top. Okay. Now if I hit control S, I've got that happening. So I'm pushing that back and I have that highlight there and I need to blend that top part. So hopefully the blend tool works this time. Um, so let's use our, let's use smudge this time and not blend tool smudge. There we go. So I just want those, those hard edges to go away and that looks like that's doing that. So S better. Now this still needs some work, but I'm just going through the different areas for you. Um, now that I have things like this, I want to bring in highlights across the bridge of the nose. And I want to define this nose a little bit more because that's not a nose. Um, we need to fix that. So first thing I'm going to do, using my um, brush, and I'm going back to the flesh tone, and that is set on screen. I'm in highlights. I'm going to go straight down the bridge of the nose. So from here to there. Control S to see what that did. And you'll notice because of my UVs, that's super tiny. That's because that's where that ends. So I need to, I'm gonna keep that UV on and just brush across here, Control S. And there we go. So we have a nose here. Problem is, the nose is a bit strange looking right now because we've got the UVs on. Let's turn that off and Control S. Okay. So since I ended up using the brush or the that tool twice, I have that little bit of a line that's going across there. Um, I'm going to use that smudge tool to hopefully fix that by just, there we go, painting that across. Save. Okay. And I'm also going to bring, um, I want this to go up a little bit. So this, this gets a little thinner here. So I'm going to just push that smudge tool this way. And then as I get up to there, I'm going to pull across this way and I'm going to blend basically that highlight with the rest of the model. So if I hit control S now, okay, this needs to be a little bit wider. So I'll pull here. And again, like I said, this takes uh, a bit of a back and forth to see what we're doing. This is looking better now. And now I need to figure out how to paint some highlights on the nose. So what I'm going to do is get the nostril area. I'm going to try and block that in. S. Okay, that went too high. So I'm going to go around here. This is that idea too. Um, you can't just knock this assignment out in two seconds. If it's something that you want for your portfolio, you need to spend some time um, working this up. And uh, like I said, this is as close as we get to like, um, I think that groove of like figure drawing and, and um, figure sculpting, uh, that would be like ZBrush. Um, but this kind of is that idea. You can put on music and you can kind of just relax and paint. Um, and that's, it's rare that I think as a, a 3D artist that we can have certain um, projects where we can do things like that. So um, this is getting better, but I need to start to define shadows. So to do that, I'm gonna go into my planes. So that's where I was, I was painting all those different shadows and stuff. And I have that other color. I'm going to hit X to switch to that one. And I'm going to paint a nose. And right now, B key, paint a nostril, control S. That's a weird looking nose. So we need to fix that. Or don't if that's the kind of nose you want. But I don't want that nose. Uh, I'm going to go and control Z to go back in time. And I need to move this further out from where that was. So if I look at where the texture is and where this is, I need to go around here. Control S. That looks a little bit better. So now I'm going to use my smudge tool. And I'm going to just kind of work the shape up of this a little bit better. So it's not just this... Um, round circle. Um, usually nostrils have a little bit of a, I don't know, a nerd term, oblique spheroid or something. Control S. 
And now that's getting there. Um, again, we're looking at this head on and we need to kind of do a couple little spins on this to look at what this is doing. Um, I think this is a good starter. Uh, if this feels like it needs to be moved in a little bit more, then we can just use our marquee selection tool, grab that little spot and use the B key and pull that. Now I know I messed up some spot right there. I'm going to blend that. So uh, you'll see when I hit control S, I think I can work with that. So I need to fix that spot that I, I took a chunk out of right there. So again, going to use my smudge and make sure I don't have any selection and we'll just fix that okay so that's good I think it might be coming down uh, down a little too much or coming up too high so I'm gonna change that control s it's looking better um we need to think about shadows as well so right now this is just one solid color so while we paint this we need to think about how um this is actually going to have a buildup of color so it's actually receding into the nose and up the nose um, so some spots are getting hit with light more than others and also underneath the nose um i forget is the uh, yes so that is the fulcrum underneath the the nose that little trough area so we need to add some shadow of how that would be um, working a filtrum so we need to actually paint some shadows to highlight that concept here too so uh, I'm gonna put a line across here and see where that hits on the model that's not bad so now that I have that line I can start to add some more shadow to this And again, smudge. Let's clean that up a little bit. And use a larger smudge on that. And paint that some more. And keep going. So once we get in that groove, okay, starting to get a lot better. So you have some lower shadows on that nose. Um, and then we still need some cleanup on it. We also need to push some shadows around the edges of this. Um, my highlight across the top of this, it's like a plus. Um, although it doesn't look like that when we look at it from uh, the texture. So we need to figure out how we can kind of knock back some of this and that's all I'm going to do is by using my uh, brush tool again with that uh, on the, the planes layer that I was on which has now become a shadow layer really um, I've got that going on I'm going to use a smudge tool smudge this away and see how bad that is when we save this okay it's actually not terrible but you can see that um, I need to blend a little bit more of this in with the other layers. So uh, we're getting there. So I'm thinking about how, as I do this, there is a flow from the, the center here down from the eye and where the eye and nose meet. And there's a little bit of like a, a, a lift to the flesh in that area. So um, cleaning this up, trying to get that to show up here. Um, I'm seeing some interesting artifacts happening there. So we got to kind of clean that out. And then I'll smudge some more. Control S. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. Um, again, the highlight, I think I needed to clean that up a little bit because it's um, this is too similar in tone. So I'm gonna actually use that smudge tool and draw down this time. I wanna thin that out. And we 
back this up. It's getting there. Um, I'm gonna use that smudge tool again and bring down a little bit more, get a little bit of highlight down on that side of the nostril. Save. Okay, I went up a little bit too far there, so I'll smudge this up. And that we're we're blending these tones. That's that's really what we're trying to do. Um, it's getting better. Again, I want to move from one spot to another, get to a point where I think it's it's okay, and then keep going um, on another section until everything's brought up to maybe medium ready, and then move on to that by um, polishing everything all at once. Right now, the one spot that I think you all can agree with me on that looks um, horrible probably all of it that you're thinking, but uh, the part that I'm going for is um, Sourpuss mouth here. She's got quite the disapproving face. Um, so we need to fix that. So what I'm going to do, my wife found out I was talking about her. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and paint this face so it looks smiley. Um, and to do that, we need to kind of look at how our um, mouth is going here. As a matter of fact, not only should we be looking at how the mouth is going on our 3D model, we should be looking at faces. Um, you you kind of can't guess this stuff, although we all have mouths and eyes and things like that. Um, to be able to get these correct, uh, it is a good idea to be looking at references of um, faces. So. I highly recommend looking at references. And for me, I think the most important thing um, is finding tutorials on how to paint um, a face. And so there's a lot of them that are out there. Um, I'm gonna first think about how I can get this, this scowl to go away, and I have no problem at all. And I told you guys this as well. Um, never be afraid to just erase things if they weren't working for you. Matter of fact, if we just get rid of this and I hit save, you're going to notice she looks already less disapproving. So we're going to get rid of all of that. And yes, I know I made a mess. That's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is use my smudge tool to clean up some of these edges because I know I really butchered this. So. S. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave this bottom part. I think that's going to be okay when I start to paint this, but I know I need to know where this starts. And with the planes and my brush tool, I need to start to draw in the mouth. Now, the big thing is the idea of a smiley face. Smiley faces, when we put two dots down, or if I increase my, we see this, right? The smiley face right here is this U shape. When someone's, when they're doing that, they're, they're anxiously smiling at you. Their eyes are telling you that they're not happy. When we do frowny faces for eyebrows, we think that they're happy. So the eyes and the eyebrows, the eyes, and the mouth all tell kind of a, a contradictory shape when we make expressions. So it's important to kind of um, pay attention to that when we're, we're making our different parts of expressions. So if this is a smiley face, or at least a, a not disapproving face like was on, on her already, um, what we should be focusing on here is the um the u shape that's happening and for a real mouth a u shape really doesn't cut it so if i if i did this that's horrifying um it's almost like a 
I don't know, it's like Planet of the Apes. It's like they couldn't make the model's mouth look correctly. So um, we're going to get rid of that. I want a human, by the way. Don't If you're giving me a furry model for this, uh, you're, you're not. Don't do that. Um, let's Let's make a start like this. Okay, and that's that's sort of getting, I think, the shape I want. And again, extremes. You can tell that just that looks artificial. So, um, less means more often for art. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna kind of start this in a certain way where um, I want. Maybe a, a shape like this. Okay. Now that I have a shape like this, I want to kind of block out the upper lip. So the upper lip would be kind of, for me, I want her to have semi-full lips. I don't want it to be super over the top. So again, I'm blocking this out first time around, probably not the right one. Give it a few um, practices before you commit. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit more. And increase my flow. Okay, now I think I can get rid of my UVs because I have some some stuff in place, control S, wrong one, there we go, okay, sort of okay, um, I'm gonna, I think this goes down too fast, so I'm just gonna move this shape over, okay, I'm gonna use this, um, I'm also now gonna clean this up, so I'm using my eraser tool, just cleaning out the lines I don't need. Now that I have this shape here, I need to think about the bottom shape. And the bottom shape, this shows up more, the top lip, because again, same thing with our eyes, that's in shadow in most cases. Um, the bottom lip is not gonna have as much of shadow going on it, so I don't need to worry about painting as much definition towards that, so just something to be aware of. Um, what I'm going to do is so I've got the lower lip kind of defined with the shadow that was already there. I like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start to add highlights and shadow to try and push this further. So the first thing I'm going to do is zoom out so it doesn't pixelate there. Okay. Uh, start to push this shadow. So I want to drop my flow. Go across and then erase out pieces I don't need. Using my smudge tool, bring this over, save. This is where we can start to shape. Okay, so now that I have something like this, I'm just gonna smudge this so I can get a little bit of a sense of color there. Um, now this is where, does your figure have makeup on? Do they not? That's That's a call for you. I don't generally have much experience with makeup digitally or in the real world um, but I think with this character I'm gonna go for a, a pretty natural look to her um, her detailing no stop at Sephora for me I think that's a place it sounds like an RPG place but it's not, it's just a makeup counter with a bunch of insecure people shopping around. Okay, let's see here. I 
there we go. So I got a top lip and my bottom lip is there already and uh, I can start to add highlights. So got my highlights and now I'm gonna start to push some of the uh, idea of the curvature on the lips because lips are they're coming outward. So if I were to think about how that would happen um, low is set at 27. Let's go more. Okay. So notice right away, let me zoom out so this is a little bit better to see. You don't want to go like, just like this. Um, try to follow the idea of the contours of the lip. Because by doing this, it's going to make it more three dimensional when we, um, bring this in. So if it doesn't look like it's doing what you need to do, you can smudge it in that direction too. And that does help a little bit to get um, this working in the direction we want it to. You notice this one too is a little too um, too bright, that one across there. So just knocking that back. And again, slow and steady. That's how you can build up these textures here. So. This mouth is, is getting there. Um, I may have to scale down how large it is. It's, I'm starting to think maybe it's a little too big. Um, but let's see if I add highlights to this, if it fixes, fixes itself a little bit. Um, before I even do that, that, that filtrum that I talked about, I should probably add some of that. So um, doing that, I'm going to paint in some highlight. I, I need to have my guide here, so my UVs to see where the heck that is. Um, so I got that going on. Um, I need to get my like the upper part. It sort of does something like this. And I'm going to use my smudge to blend this layer in with the other one. So um, this is also referred to as the trough. Um, I remember in school or somewhere they said that this was a way to filter snot away from your mouth. I'm not sure if that's exactly why we have those things. That's a pretty cool way to think about it though. Save. There's what I got right now. So notice just with a couple strokes with that there, it's starting to work a little bit better. You'll notice though, it looks like it's it's moving away from the, um, the center, so I need to kind of paint in this. So I don't know if if you guys notice this too. I, I think it's kind of amazing when we, um, as artists, work on projects. We start to realize just how awesome um, reality is in the sense of how stuff is constructed. So um, the the elegant way that one shape flows into another. Uh, it's just it's really cool to see how uh, nature constructed this stuff and how um, it's also kind of scary how easy it is for us to totally butcher that and then make it look like something that we want to um, hide and never show anyone ever because of how bad it looks so um, just amazing the the flow that human faces have and how easy it is to not do that correctly when we're, we're, we're painting a different respect, I think for, um, people. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Anymore. All right. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying it may seem weird, but I think you guys all probably have that same feeling when you start to work on certain things. If you're doing it and being passionate about it, if you are just doing this for a grade, who cares, right? All right, so I got, there we go. Starting to get together. Um, I don't like how big her lips are. Um, <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave them like that, but they're, they're a bit weird to me. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just try to reduce some of the uh, the planes. I'm going to push that back this way, and I'm even going to erase.
erase out some of this right here because that was a little intense. There's always that idea too um, when we're making artwork. Are we helping or um, causing, I guess, that sense of objectification of, of people? Um, are we trying to represent a beautiful person that is just a beautiful person or are we adding stereotypes that I think um, hurt so much? You see that a lot in, in RPGs and things like that where uh, the female character for whatever reason has like a cloth draped across their body and the male character has like straight up like 800 pieces of armor on them. And uh, I think it's, it's sort of our jobs as artists to... Um, break the mold a little bit and then come up with uh, cool armor that females can wear and not just uh, a chunk of cloth that you found on the ground to put an entire character in. So, um, of, of course, art directors and things like that are responsible for these things. Um, and there is something to be said about how sex sells, obviously. But when we are making our own characters, uh, we don't have to fall into all those really annoying tropes that happen all of the time. Okay, so the issue I think is right here. That is too deep. Okay, that's getting better. So this is where we can keep building this up pushing contrast on it. Um, the planes right now I'm on right here. I need to think about where our um, shadows and our intersections are. So if I keep working up spots like this, the darkest this will be are in the really deep spots of the face. And then they'll, they'll get lighter as they go up. So again, I can paint those shapes that way. Control S. And we're already getting a lot of depth on here. So this is how we'll um, continue. I just found that left and right bracket changes the perspective view. I probably should read more about Maya. I did not know that. It's always fun to have a happy little accident. Those are better than the, the bad kind, right? All right, so I'm gonna just add a little bit more shadow there, see what that did. It's a little too much, so I'm gonna knock that back. Okay, so yeah, this is how our little model will end up having the rest of her face uh, sculpted out. And by sculpting, I say that, but I mean painting. Um, but we're at, we're trying to push depth and, and highlights here. So, um, and this this is almost really there. You don't need to do the ears if I can't see them. So don't feel you need to, to add those as textures. It's not worth it for this. Um, so I need to add some eyelids, and I'll do the hair. I'll do that in a separate video, and I'll wrap this up, and uh, we'll, we'll finish this thing up.